I've worked throughout my life on the evolution of animal societies. And people tend to think of animals as living in undifferentiated populations. But actually, animals like humans live in structured societies. And some of those are open groups where members change from time to time. Others are quite stable groups, so the same individuals live in the same groups, in some cases, throughout their lives. There are monogamous species, where one male is mated to one female. And there are polygynous species, where one male breeds with multiple females. And then, like the animals that I work on particularly at the moment, there are cooperative species where you get one breeding female who is responsible for all the breeding in a group and everyone else helps to raise her young. So that there are a wide range of animal societies and the structure of societies has enormous influences on the determinants of breeding success in males and females. At the moment, I'm concentrating on the evolution of cooperative societies, and we work on meerkats, which are in French syricat, which are a desert-adapted mongoose. And they're one of a very small number of animal societies where, animals, where they live in, where individuals live in large, stable groups, but where one individual is responsible for virtually all the breeding in the group so that all the other individuals, both males and females, help to rear her young. The females, you, you will get non-breeding females who actually lactate to her young. Uh, all the individuals help to babysit her young, to guard them against predators. They also help to feed the young during the period when the young are dependent. So just one female gets to breed. And one of the consequences of that is that there is intense competition between females for the breeding slot. One of the consequences of that is that females tend to be fiercer and more aggressive than males and are dominant to males. So in contrast to societies where one male breeds with multiple females and there's intense competition between males, where males are commonly larger and more aggressive and have antlers or, or other weapons, in cooperative societies the situation is reversed and females are commonly in charge and they control everyone else. You can certainly say that so societies have important consequences on evolution. So societies, so the evolution of individuals uh, depends ultimately on the traits that affect the breeding success uh, of individuals. So that evolution, natural selection, operates through individual differences in the number of offspring that individuals leave behind when they die. So there's a, a close. Uh, rule of thumb for, for, for an individual's success is its lifetime breeding success, the number of offspring it produces throughout its life. And societies affect the determinants of lifetime breeding success in males and females. The structure of societies and breeding systems has very far-reaching effects on almost all, uh, all aspects of, of animal biology. It affects the morphology of individuals, it affects their growth, uh, it affects their physiology, and it affects their behavior. No animals would be able to solve the kinds of problems that humans face. So I think it's not the case that animals provide a direct indicator for how we're going to solve those problems. I think they provide various warnings about the problems if we don't, that we face if we don't solve them. And I think that potentially the exchange between people who work on animals who perhaps have a, a broad perspective on this and the people who work on, on human cooperation might provide a basis for understanding how we approach human cooperation and what kinds of approaches might be useful.